commander to ask questions about the aircraft he had seen for an article in the magazine he was editing. The very first question I asked him, I says, are these the flying saucers everybody's been hearing about? He says, yes, they are. So I asked him, are these the aircraft that caused the Roswell uh, publication stuff? He says, yes, they are. I says, all this stuff about aliens and things, they come from your aircraft. He says, yes, we had accidents. So I asked him, well, obviously this type aircraft had to be for some specific use. I says, were they spy planes? He says, yes, over Russia? He says, yes, but you cannot print that. And I don't know whether I should even say that over this film or not. Apart from his own account, there are no official records to corroborate Jack Pickett's story of the American military's flying saucers in the 60s. But there is evidence in this recently declassified Air Force document that saucer-shaped aircraft were on the drawing boards of America's Air Technical Intelligence Center ten years earlier in 1955. It was called Project Silverbug and contained plans for the development of a vertical takeoff saucer-shaped craft capable of flying at high altitudes and supersonic speeds using a radial flow engine. However, there's no evidence that Project Silverbug went ahead. But tracing a possible lineage for saucer-shaped craft back ten years earlier, there is a craft that fits the bill. In 1946, Thomas Smith was an engineer working on classified aircraft that were being constructed for the American Navy. They took me out into the hangar and they showed me this new jet aircraft and I said, oh, then I looked over to the left and I said, holy mackerel, what is that over there? And they said, well, uh, that's a t since you're clear for top secret, that's our, it's called a pancake. As a matter of fact, the material you've been testing is being used to build that. It looked like a disc and the New Haven papers would report the fact that some round object was saw flying over New Haven. And of course we were laughing because those of us who worked on it knew what it was that they had seen. It's certainly the case that in the 1960s and in the 1950s, the Central Intelligence Agency knew that many UFO reports were in fact sightings of its classified balloon and aircraft uh, programs and uh, didn't do anything to dispel the public confusion. The public was seeing a lot of classified programs back in the 50s and 60s, looked like unidentified flying objects. The intelligence community knew that those were their own programs and just didn't tell anyone. At a time when many UFOs were being mistaken for secret projects, the Air Force had already made a public statement that there were no secrets of their own that could be mistaken for UFOs. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any agency of the United States. Rocket tests in New Mexico in the 1950s and 60s were frequently mistaken for flying saucers. It's not inconceivable that at the height of the Cold War, the American military found in the UFO phenomenon a ready-made cover story for the many secret activities that they were involved in. Today, the public is just as much in the dark about black projects. But there's no doubt that the technology is far more sophisticated and advanced than ever. Just how exotic the new propulsion systems and aircraft shapes of tomorrow may be is not known for sure. But informed commentators and aviation experts believe that a new generation codenamed Aurora is being constructed and prototypes already flying. During the late 1980s, I think the United States government was spending several billion dollars on very highly classified, high-altitude, high-speed aircraft, publicly called Aurora, extremely secret program that to this day the U.S. government denies ever existed. But if you look at the number of reports of uh, people seeing high-flying, fast airplanes, the amount of money that seems to have disappeared without a trace, 
And in the case of NASA's X-33, a lot of advanced technology that seems to have come from nowhere, I think there's a good case that Aurora was a real project. We spent a lot of money on it, and the government still denies it exists. The Defense Evaluation and Research Agency at Farnborough is an executive branch of the Ministry of Defense. They agreed to look at David Spohr's pictures. Dr. Richard Crowther is expert in, among other things, identifying space debris in the skies over Britain. We asked him if he knew what the unidentified objects in David Spohr's pictures were. Potentially it could be a tank from a launch vehicle, it could be any pressurized vessel from a, from a satellite. Without any idea of the resolution, any idea of the distance from the observer, any reference point against which the motion can be um, measured, I'm not confident that it is space debris. This could be some atmospheric phenomenon, uh, such as a cloud, uh, which is uh, illuminated in a certain way by the sun. It's unlikely to be space debris simply because the apparent motion is stationary. If there is an object there, phys a physical object there in the sky, it could be an aircraft or whatever, uh, but I, as I say, I would not imagine it's a, a, a piece of space debris. A few days later, Richard Crowther called to say that the image that David Spohr had recorded on the 19th of August could have been the American space shuttle passing over Lowestoft as it returned to Earth. It was scheduled to be over the North Sea around lunchtime that day. David Spohr says his video was taken at about 7.45 in the evening. Spohr's most controversial pictures were to come about a year later. My wife was actually at a council meeting with some other councillors and I looked towards the east and I managed to get a shot of it with the camera actually propped on the top of our car so it's fairly steady. It kept in that position for around half a minute or so then it suddenly shot off quite a f pretty fast speed fast enough that I couldn't keep up with it once it disappeared I stopped filming and tried to move around to the house to see if I could pick it up anywhere else and I couldn't see it anywhere Again, it made no sound whatsoever. David Spohr willingly agreed to bring his video to London for examination by a team of forensic specialists. Network International regularly assists Scotland Yard in criminal matters. Authenticating photographic and electronic images is Rob Butler's speciality. He had examined two of David's videos in detail before delivering his findings. What appears to be a triangular shaped object may not be in reality. What appears to be an object moving to the left, in fact, could be a stationary object. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I would agree with, uh, with you on that. But on the other hand, what appears to be a triangular object could well be a triangular object and it could be, could be moving to the left as well. And there certainly is evidence to suggest that it's actually the camera that's moving, not the object. I don't think I was moving that much, but I mean, there's a possibility I could have wavered slightly now and again. Yeah. Um, but